In this video, I'm going to show how to attach a PL259 connector from DX Engineering. This connector has a crimp collar for the cable shield, and then you solder the uh, center conductor on the coax cable. I'm also going to be using a piece of Berry Flex low loss cable from Davis RF. And I'm going to be using the coax stripping tools from DX Engineering. These are pretty cool. This is a cable grabber that just gives you a better grip on the cable. And this is the actual stripper that has blades for two sides. Uh, I'll show you how that works in a bit. I'm also going to use this ratcheting coax crimp tool that I really like. I've used this also for Anderson power poles. You can buy different dies that you put in here. This one I particularly like. I'll have a link to all of these tools uh, in the description below. And then I'm also going to use two types of wire cutters to clean up the ends. And this, this pair I usually just use for this little feature that it has right here where you can pinch a wire to get it back into shape because after you snip it, it kind of, kind of makes it a little bit oval. And I'll show you how that works as well. I'm also going to use an X-Acto knife because the DX Engineering cutter doesn't cut all the way through in certain spots, but that's fine. You just clean it up with a X-Acto knife. So the first thing we're going to do is I have my piece of coax here and I want to square up the ends. This cable came off of a spool, so it kind of naturally wants to curve, but when you're putting it through the stripping tool, you really want to have it be straight. So I kind of want to bend it the opposite way to make it nice and straight. And then uh, once I have it where I like it, right about here looks good, I'm going to square up the end with some cutters. You can see what I mean by it makes an oval shape there. And so I'm going to take these other cutters that I have, and then I'll use these little nubs on the sides. And I'll just make that round again. I'm not going crazy and pressing too hard though. All right, now it's time to strip this thing. So I'm going to take the grabber tool. I'm going to wrap it around the cable here. It just gives you a nice place to grip on. It's harder to grab if you're just grabbing the cable, but I mean, you can definitely do it without it. And then it's going to kind of bend this in the opposite way of the natural curve that it has just to make sure it's straight. And I'll show you the inside of the cutting tool here. So you have this side, is this, which is the side that you do first. And this cuts the various parts of the cable at different depths so that it's going to be the right dimensions to fit inside of the DX engineering connector. And then after you do this side, so basically you spin that on the cable, then you go to this side that just has one long blade that will score the outside of the, the cable sheath, and then you kind of pull everything off. So let's give it a go. So I'm gonna open this, and then on the side without the blades right here, press it up all the way to the top so that you get good contact there with the blades. You can see right here, and I'm going to close down on it and squeeze. Kind of slide my grabber here. And then you just kind of give it a few turns. You can feel it cutting as you go. And I'm squeezing it with my right hand so that I can make sure that these blades cut to the maximum depth. I've tried rotating the opposite way as well, and I feel like it works a little bit better just going one direction. I don't know, maybe it doesn't really, but I feel like when you do it this way that the shielding on the cable doesn't fray as much, so I don't know. Your mileage may vary. All right, so that's pretty good. Now you're going to open this. You can see here it put all of these little cuts within the cable there, okay? When you're using this, you got to be careful. I'm kind of doing this for the camera and holding it open like this, but you don't want to stick your fingers in there and cut yourself. So you want to use the opposite side now and you put the whole cable that you've already sliced horizontally in here. And now you're going to kind of do a vertical slice on it. So you squeeze it closed and you're going to pull. And you can see some of the pieces of it already came off. If I open this, here's some of the, the rest of it there. You can throw that away. I'm going to take this off. 
and you can see we have the the braided shield here we have some foil that will probably twist off right here yep throw that away and then for me on this particular cable it doesn't cut totally through the insulator here and this is where i use my exacto knife and i just want to do lightly go around it put a little bit of pressure trying to cut cut it through the rest of the way without damaging the center conductor not putting a ton of pressure here Twist it a little. Oh yeah, it's gonna come off now. So you twist that. And you have your nice center conductor right there. See? Before you go any further, you're gonna wanna put this collar on because we're gonna pull the shielding back a little bit so that we're able to insert this connector underneath. And then this collar is going to come back over that shield and pin it against the connector there. And that's when we're going to crimp it. But you want to put this on before you start messing around with the sheath. So I'm just going to slide this over carefully. Another thing you probably want to do is if um, you're going to use heat shrink, which I usually do. So you'll do the same thing. This is a half inch heat shrink, I think. Okay, so now I have my cable prepped and I have my heat shrink here, my collar here, and my end that we've been working on here. And one thing I wanna do before I start is just kinda of go like this to see if I can get any loose shielding to come off. Um, sometimes you might see some poking over the edge a little farther than you'd like. You can just kinda of snip that off. So now we need to start opening up this shield right here so that we're able to fit the base of the connector in it. And underneath the shield is a piece of foil that we want to leave in place, so you don't want to pull that up either. You want that this to basically be sandwiched between the foil and that shield there. I like to use my X-Acto knife so I can be kind of precise without messing up this nice shield that's on here. And I just kind of pry it up a little bit, and I take my time and work my way around it. Maybe you can be more aggressive with this, but I'd rather take my time and do it right the first time instead of have a problem and have to fix it later. Just kind of work your way around. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, another thing I like to do is I take the side of the X-Acto knife there and I like to press against any areas of the foil shield so that uh, none of it's sticking up and gets caught as the connector slides on. I also like to do this with gloves on just to avoid getting oils from my skin on here. All right. Now let's take our connector and we're going to gently put it over the center conductor and this insulator here and slide it in between the outer braid and the uh, inner foil. When I put it on here, I usually like to kind of twist it a little bit see if it's going to pick up that foil anywhere and I can kind of push it down before it'll peel any of that back. I spin it around as I'm pushing it down. It's looking pretty good. And I press it down firmly to make sure that it's seated. You can see the center conductor coming out of the end there. We're going to solder that. All right, and now we take our collar, and as we slide it up, we keep pressure down here because we don't want this to just pop off because there's nothing really holding it on. So we press that up, and then look around where the collar meets the top of the connector to make sure that there's no pieces of that braid coming through. I don't like to have any gaps there, and that's looking pretty good. Another thing you can kind of you can do to make your job a little easier is you can take the uh, rotating part of the connector off, just get it out of the way, so you have a better view of what's going on here. So you want to make sure that this is pushed together nicely. Now we're going to use our crimpers. And the way I like to do it is I like to crimp the top of the connector and the bottom of the connector as well. 
If you think maybe you shouldn't do it that way, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Do you want to crimp the middle? Do you crimp the bottom? I crimp the top because I figure that's the closest part to the connector. And then I like to give it a crimp on the bottom too, just to make sure nothing goes anywhere. So here we go. Just kind of carefully align this thing, pressing from the bottom and the top. And then grab the crimper with two hands and make sure you bottom it out completely. There you go. I think it's probably fine to just leave it like that, but I don't know. I feel better about crimping the whole thing, just making sure that it has a good seal everywhere. So I'll give it a crimp on the bottom. And just in case for some reason that loosened it on the top, I'll just give the top another crimp, being careful to make sure everything's aligned on the faces of that crimping die. Just give it a second crimp on the top. Awesome. Now that'll slide back up there. And we're almost all the way there. Next step is we have to solder this. For soldering this, I've tried two different ways. One is using one of those Weller soldering guns that people use for plumbing sometimes because that puts out a lot of heat. This thing acts like a heat sink, so it wants to really draw a lot of heat out of it. I didn't really like using that. The tip of that is too big, in my opinion. Maybe I just don't have good technique, but I would put it on the bottom here and try and fill solder in here, and the solder would wrap around, and you'd end up with a big blob here, and just even trying to get it off with solder wick, I had a hard time doing just because this thing sucks out so much heat. So my preferred way is using my regular soldering iron that I can crank up to, I think it's 850 degrees. And uh, I'll show you that now. So this is the solder that I'm going to use. It's a lead-free silver-based solder. I'll include a link in the description below. And I'm going to turn my iron on to about 850 degrees. So I'll take a second to heat up there. So what I'm going to do is hold the tip of my iron in this little cup that's right at the end of the tip. I'm going to put a little puddle of solder there. So that helps transfer heat to the connector. But I'm not going to keep feeding the solder into the iron because that could make a cold solder joint. So I'm going to let that puddle heat up the whole thing there. And then um, once the center gets hot, it'll start melting on the center conductor. And that's how we know we've reached the appropriate temperature. So you can see what the connector looks like now it's soldered. I managed to not get any on the outside. And one thing I like to do after soldering this is um, use a little isopropyl alcohol. Just kind of clean that connector off. Okay, I got my cleaned up connector there. See, looks pretty good. And I'll take this little collar here, put that back up on there. 
And then the final step is to put the heat shrink on. And I usually put the heat shrink, I don't put it all the way up because that will prevent this collar from going all the way back. So I usually put it like somewhere right here. That lets it go back far enough. I'm gonna use my handy heat gun here. I like to use marine heat shrink. You can tell when you've done a good job because the little, the glue comes out the back there. And then there it is. That's using the DX Engineering connector with their tools to put it on a coax cable. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please feel free to like, subscribe, you know, whatever you're feeling. All right, thanks for watching.